All right, folks. Greetings, sa peace. Welcome to episode 52 of my gameplay commentary of Tales of Arise. This is yours truly, Bionic and San Francisco. Man. All right, so uh, we got new outfit for and the new, uh, you know, new design in the background in the menu of uh, the parties. As you can see, Shion is. Uh, giving positive vibes so let's see here so as instructed, we have to go further. Ah, you can always uh, count on Tales of Arise to have another cutscene. That's quite some door, all right. This might finally be it. The heart of the beast. We'll find the Renis Alma and the Red Woman inside, right? After everything we've been through to get here, they damn well better be. We'll probably be needing you to open this one for us, Sovereign. Yeah, Go we for it, Alfin. We just new clothes. This is it, guys. Time to see what secrets are in store. Well, I think the game will give us the opportunity to be in the full health. Uh oh. Me and my big mouth. We're a long way from the residential quarters now. It looks completely different. Yeah, you're right. Actually, this place... It reminds me more of being back inside the Wedge. Except the Dan and Astral Energy feels even stronger here. In a portion of the city reserved purely for the Renin Sovereign. Maybe he just has strange tastes? This place looks like it has been here for quite some time now. If its design were a matter of personal preference, we would be talking from centuries ago, or perhaps even further back. Still, this isn't the sort of decadence of taste spoken of in artistic circles. So what is it then? Hold up, decadence? Artistic circles? When a preference is indulged to its extreme, it descends into kitsch, eccentricity for the sake of it. I'd be happy to illuminate you further. That depends. Does it involve you buying me lunch? The void that art fills isn't the stomach, it's the soul. In that case, I'll let you know the next time my soul starts to rumble. Now all we need is something to fill up the void inside your head. Shut up! I think they're a good couple. But however, Shion still, uh, you know, uh, what decides or desires to touch Law to give him a well deserved you know uh ass whooping all right if there's any doubt that there's a boss battle here you know the the replenishment of our health points and our cure points just a while ago that settles there's a boss fight here Volron. he really was still alive and there's the renis alma 
Then is this another spirit channeling ceremony? Wait, though. Something doesn't seem right here. Once more, the powers must be united. Born from the fires of chaos, the world does seek its rightful You're still alive, homie. Must be sacrificed in the heart of Rena at the shrine of the true sovereign. But what has happened to him? He's lost himself, reduced to a mere cog in the machine. Hey, look! Over there! Isn't that the Maiden's Crest? Can it be that this entire chamber is meant to act as a substitute for the Maiden? It looks like it's still running, but are we already too late to stop the ceremony? If that's what caused Lenegus's transformation, then the purpose of the ceremony must have been to drain all the astral energy out of Dana. But for what purpose? What could possibly need astral energy on that sort of scale? I don't know. But whatever it is, I'll bet it's connected to those visions of oblivion. Regardless, we cannot stand by and let them steal Dana's energy. That said, we should retrieve the Renes Alma. Because right now, we need that most of all. Come on, where's the boss fight? He's not gonna lunge at us out of nowhere, right? Not the time, Law. Alvin, look! The Red Woman! So we finally found you. I have a lot of questions for you. Wait! What? They all have the same face? How is that even possible? <laughs> what is this? Who the hell are they? It can't be. Are they even people? It's hard to know for sure, but I think they're the true rulers of Rena. Feeling particularly tough. It's no use, Alfie. If we don't fight, we may as well be sitting dust here. Good point. Let's stop them before this gets out of hand. Take this! Burn! Burn up! 
I'm really confident with the way we handle things right now considering that we have defeated a lot of optional boss which are also leveled 42 44 surrender fighting is useless now do you think it's really over oh. watch out they've got something up their sleeve oh bad what? It's self-destructed? Elfin! I'm okay. Just a little roughed up. You had me worried there. Who said you could touch that? Damn it! He's awake! Hmm. I should have thought as much. So you know this place? Naturally, it was built for me, after all. We'll save that for another time. More pressing is how I'm going to tear you apart. Even after all this time, you still insist on hating me? You cut me down. Sovereign or not, you will pay for that. <laughs> You're obviously bluffing. You can't even move right now. Really, is that what you think? Did you really think that such a petty device could hold me? Are you going to claim it's because you're a ruler? Be it sovereigns or lords. In the end, they're all titles given by someone else. Plus, what kind of ruler would spend all his time chasing Alf, who happens to be another sovereign? Idle prattle. I proved my worth and the sovereign's powers were granted to me. Were they really? We already know the title of sovereign doesn't denote royalty. It is but an overblown codename for those with the designated part to play in these proceedings. You mentioned before that you were not the only one stolen from Dana, correct? Yeah. There were countless. And every one of them besides me... died. All of those failed experiments, and they still kept going back to Dana. There must have been some vital reason their subject had to specifically be a Dana. Then there were the records we found in the library, for you and Volron. They were locked 300 years apart, and yet the data they took from you was exactly the same. Which leads us to a single conclusion. Then you mean, Boron was kidnapped just like Alfin? But then he became a... A slave from Dana. Just like us. Isn't that right, Volron? So he posed as a Renan and caused all that suffering to his own people? How oh, what could the... you? If you knew the pain of being a slave, why would you inflict that upon others? What a douchebag. Renan and Dana have meaningless distinctions. He and everyone else. That is all that matters. <laughs> I will stand above all others and take what is rightfully mine, starting with this. <sighs> A red woman? Another one? Give your master back on Rena this message. No one makes a fool of me. Let them know I'll make them suffer. Don't do it!
لو حليم You're still alive? How are you still alive? Never forget, I am the one who devours everything. Who answers to neither spirit nor man. My word is law. I am. I am. Blood. Are you two okay? Yeah. We'll be fine. Is Volron... have we finally seen the last of him? We can but hope. Those red women... what the heck was their deal? Could they be the ones behind all this? The same ones who put those soldiers and Faria in a trance? What? Those brainless things? <sighs> Either way, they've done a runner with the Renesalma. Damn it, that's the second time now! Whatever's stolen from us, we'll steal it back. The future's ours to protect. And right now, those things are what's standing in our way. We can head them off at Rena. Did you say Rena? Volron mentioned a master of theirs holed up in the Motherland somewhere. If that monstrous forms their true identity, I shudder to think who they take orders from. Yeah, there's a good chance it's not human. That's for sure. So this thing over on Rena, that's what's really behind all this, huh? They have the Rena Salma in their grasp already, so it's unlikely they'll have cause to return to Dana. I agree that Rena's our best shot. Then we're agreed. Let's head back to the starship. But seriously, I was not expecting Voron to actually be here. He seemed to care not one whit about Brennan's or Danans. Yeah, and not in a good way, like with us. I didn't see that coming about Volron. As for those red women, to think they were monsters all along. Tell me about it. One minute they look perfectly human. Next thing you know, they're not actually human at all. They definitely weren't Renan or Danon. I'm not even sure language would get through to them. So what were they then? Human Zugal hybrids? Is the most terrifying thing anyone said all day. How about you, Shion? Dohali? You ever seen anything like that before? No, never. However, if they're the same as the Red Woman we've seen with Volron, 
I think it's safe for us to assume they understand our language at the very least. I had just so much I wanted to ask them. About Rena and Shion's thorns. Unfortunately, they blew themselves up before we got the chance. Why would they do such a thing, though? To take us with them? Or in order to keep something hidden? Both sound plausible to my ears. They took off with the Renis Alma too, remember? Yeah, they did. And the next time we meet them, we're going to make sure they tell us everything they know. Yeah, good luck with that. I haven't learned anything here. Alright, the good thing about this is that there are no more enemies here. Ah! Good, 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 good. Well, that's the good thing about what we're doing here. We're not ducking anything. That's why, um, you know, we're leveling up consisting it consistently. Uh, 
Nah, it's not really that close. Party's ego. Alright. I don't know if there's some boss fights here, but uh, let's, let's see. Another cutscene.
What the? When did it get pitch dark all of a sudden? The lights are all out. Think it has something to do with the explosion back in the Forbidden Zone? Doe? You two. Faria, Avakir. Thank goodness you're safe. Avakir filled me in about everything. About how I ambushed you all. She doesn't remember a thing. So she really was being controlled. He told me about Tarnigan, too. Is it true? What difference does it make? What's done is done. Stop casting me off! Just for one- Faria, not now. It can wait. Dohalim, Lenegas is in grave peril. So I can see. It's the city's core reactor. It's damaged. Some of the basic systems we've managed to keep online, but complete restoration still a way off. You're an elite technician, though. You can fix it, right? If so, then what's the problem? Panic's begun to set in among the citizens. Until now, whenever something like this happened, the Sovereign would issue a decree. But this time, not so much as a peep. Any longer and we run the risk of riots breaking out before we can get things back up and running. Forget the Sovereign. I doubt you'll be hearing from him anytime soon. What's that supposed to mean? Do you know something I don't? Suffice it to say, the Sovereign isn't the kind of ruler we thought he was. That is, if he ever even existed, which is looking doubtful at this stage. Are you out of your mind? Why, if people knew that a lord such as yourself was whispering such blasphemy, they'd... There's no time to explain now. It sounds like we need to find a way to keep Lenegas from spiraling out of control. We need to stop that riot. But how do we do that? Riots feed on discontent and unrest, right? So if we want to keep the peace, we just need to put people's minds at ease. And put some... At ease. Like by letting them hear directly from someone they trust. Darling. That's it. Who's the highest ranking person in Lenegas right now? Lenegas wouldn't have a next in line. After all, you said the Sovereign rules over everyone directly, right? Correct. The closest thing to an authority figure would be a lord. And the only one left is... Ah. Very well, then. Avakir, you mentioned a few facilities were still online. Which ones? Uh, why hasn't the Sovereign said anything? Please, won't somebody explain what's going on? Is it over? What's going to happen to all of us? Keep me now, fellow Renans of Lenigus. It is I, Lord Dohalim Ilkaris of Eldamen and Sia. Look up there, it's Lord Dohalim! Hold on, he should be in the crown contest! Shouldn't he? Why isn't the Sovereign talking to us? The Sovereign is seeing to other matters right now. In my capacity as Lord, I speak to you in his stead. You're afraid. As people so often are when faced with the unknown. I hope you'll allow me to put your fears to rest. The city's core reactor has experienced a malfunction. However, we have our top engineers attending to the matter. Things will soon be back to normal. I know that you feel abandoned. Perhaps more scared and alone than ever before. But I ask you all to keep one thing in mind. You are Lenegas. Not the Lords and Sovereign. The solidarity of its citizens is the mortar that holds it together. If we don't allow ourselves to be distracted by our differences, if we put our hearts and minds together and stand as one, I am confident we will find them. I would be honored to stand with you. Not as a person of loftier rank, but as another human being among them. I hope that you'll lend me your strength, for if we can persevere as one, I know a bright tomorrow awaits.
Your speech seems to have done the trick. Looks like the city won't be descending into chaos after all. I only pray the relief will tide the city over for the time being. What you said earlier, about the Sovereign possibly not even existing, was it true? It's still too premature to say with any certainty, but I believe so. This whole time, this world we've been fed was a lie, built on nothing but falsehoods. But it can't all have been... I can believe it. After everything I saw in the Forbidden Zone, what they did to Faria, it's the only explanation that makes sense. But what about hierarchy of Akir, authority, the very foundations of Renan society? How can we live without someone to guide us? I'd say we found someone capable of doing just that, wouldn't you? Y you You can't be serious. I have business I must take care of first, but once everything is over, I shall return. But not as your sovereign, nor as a leader the likes of which the people here are used to, I think. But how else do you propose to rule? I'm not sure yet. All I have is a feeling that here in Lenigus, a new dawn is on the verge of breaking. One in which people won't be judged by birthright or on the power of their astral arts, but on other things. More important things. Things like... Oh, I don't know. Musical talent, for example. When I bumped into you after all those years, I said you were no different. But I was wrong. Truth is, you were always different. I feel like... Like, maybe now I can finally begin to accept Turnigan's death. To see a future. <laughs> you go finish whatever it is you've got to do. I'll hold down the fort here in Lenigas till you get back. Thank you. I guess you're not going to make it to Menencia for the foreseeable future, huh? Indeed. Forgive me. The people of Elderman and Sia can look after themselves just fine. It's the ones here on Lenigus who need someone to guide them. Besides, with you leading the people here, it'll help spread the idea of coexistence beyond Men and Sia's borders that much faster. Sounds like you're in it for the long haul. How could I not be? after the second chance that I've been granted. From this day forth, I shall dedicate myself to the future inhabitants of this world. Though the memories of the departed shall remain forever in my heart. Remember, you're going to be leading the people here, not ruling them. True enough. Whatever would I do without you, Kisara? With or without her, I suspect you're gonna have your hands full when the time comes. We should be heading back to the ship. Business on Rena awaits. Looks like the people of Lenigus can rest easy. I couldn't have done it without your words of encouragement, Law. Hey, you're the one who made the speech. I think everybody can share the credit here. In one sense, when all is said and done, perhaps I have been a slave this whole time, too. You, a Renan lord? How do you figure that exactly? I was complicit in the Renan system, bound by its values, resigned to being swept along, without the resolve to take a stand. And when I realized the severity of my mistake, all I longed for was punishment. A lord. And yet my first instinct was to place my fate in the hands of others. 
I think I can relate. I couldn't stand watching my people bow and scrape their way through life, but I didn't know what else I could do about it either. The ability to think for yourself and be your own master, that's what separates a slave from a free person. At least, that's what Law's dad Zephyr used to say. Zephyr taught me how to fight. But in doing so, he also taught me how to live. Even if it means stumbling along the way. If it's on a road of our own choosing, free of regret. Why, that's the road of freedom. Or, to put it another way, so long as his heart is compromised, even the loftiest of kings is no freer than a slave. I think I finally understand now. This Zephyr character sounds like he was a wise man indeed. I only wish I could have met him. There's just... so much I wish I could ask him, especially now. I wonder, have I been correctly carrying on the torch that he passed to me? You're so modest. You have done a lot of good things already, Alpen. How long have you known? Known what? About the darkness I carry inside me. You seem to have been aware of it for quite some time now. Why ask me now? What does it matter? But, yes, I have. I've pretty much known that something was gnawing at you ever since we left Menencia. So basically since the very start of our journey then. Just when I thought I couldn't feel more ashamed. Leave the past where it belongs. We have no need for it now. You're forging ahead. That's what matters. If my brother could see you, he'd be proud. <laughs> Not as proud as he would be of his sister, I'm sure. Well then, just as well it's not a competition, huh? <sighs> Kisara? Anyone at home in there? <laughs> Sorry. Did I look distracted? Among other things. To be entirely honest, I couldn't tell whether you were smiling or frowning. You were thinking about Dohalim, weren't you? <laughs> that obvious, huh? I was just thinking how good it is to see him moving forward at last. It was always so infuriating, knowing how capable he could be if he just put his mind to it. A prisoner trapped in a cage of his own self-doubt. But now, he's finally beginning to spread his wings. I'm happy for him. So, then why do you look so sad? Oh, I don't know if I'd say sad. There's a bitter sweetness to it, I guess. It's good and... strange, knowing that he won't be needing me anymore. It probably sounds weird, doesn't it? I have this massive worry off my mind. I should be jumping up and down for joy, right? Must be that maternal instinct of yours at work. Rinwell's right. You're like a mother bird, finally letting go as her child takes his first shaking and nervous flight from the nest. A pretty big child! <laughs> That's one way to look at it. I wouldn't like to see Dohalim's face if he heard you say that. All this has made me realize, I can't allow myself to become a prisoner of my own making like he was. If Dohalim can forge his own path ahead, then I can too. I won't be left behind. Alright, it appears that we are gonna go to Reina. Check back in on the ranch.
You can never be... Too prepared. But did we have to spend? Alright. I'd like to check their wares if you don't mind. and tastes just as good.
All right, so we are now going to Rena. I miss the speech I miss the speech of Adohalim But Dohali will still uh, accompany the party until we get to Rena. Hmm. Let's see whether Residential 4 has improved. Oh, there's still some injuries. You hate to see that. Alright folks, uh, I'm just gonna continue this on episode 53. Hope you enjoy my gameplay commentary. There's a lot of boss fights here in this episode. Hopefully it's just recorded because sometimes uh, PS5 or this game is not recording some of the parts of the one hour show. Alright, thank you everyone. God bless you all and stay safe out there folks.